Good afternoon. We'll call the meeting back to order. I'd like to welcome KPMG LLP regarding our audit. Good afternoon. Um, thanks for having us again this year. So uh, I am Laura Rivero. I'm the audit partner on the uh, engagement this year. I was also part of the audit last year. So this is my second year uh, working with you. And this is Colin Mitchell. He has been, uh, he is a senior manager and been on the engagement for uh, more years. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, so also uh, familiar. So uh, thank you for that. Um, I think in terms of our findings for the audit, what we'll present is what we have is the summary findings report. Um, so that uh, document is in front of you. Uh, and just in terms of going through that, so the scope of our audit really is um, outlined in the engagement letter, which was signed back in January. Um, nothing's changed in terms of our responsibilities there. Um, independence, we do communicate, we are required to communicate that we are independent with respect to the county uh, for, the, for the year under audit. Uh, materiality, so that number is the number that we use um, to gauge whether or not there's a significant misstatement in the financial statements or one that would impact the ability of the users to understand or use the information in the financial statements. Um, auditing standards would allow us um, a range of possibilities within that number. Um, this, the materiality for this year was $1.1 million, which is very similar to last year's of $1 million. And that's just a percentage of um, total assets, correct? Revenues. revenues of revenues. Tax base. Um, and so that uh, is how we would determine whether or not there's any significant misstatements. Um, the threshold for re reporting any um, misstatements to you is $55,000 this year compared to $50,000 last year. And that just is a 5% of the materiality number. So again, not significant, uh, not significantly different. Uh, that number also, of course, is the number we would communicate misstatements, but only those outside of the fraud and illegal act nature. Anything uh, related to fraud or illegal acts, we would communicate to you regardless of the dollar amount. Um, and so I'll communicate at this time that there was nothing noted in our audit in that respect. So that's great. And with that, we'll turn it back to you folks, because as much as we're here to report on the findings from our audit, we are required under professional standards to ask certain questions, which we've had discussions with management uh, during the planning stages throughout the audit and at the closing process. But we also certainly want to speak to the governing body as well, uh, being yourselves, and ask the question, are you aware of any fraudulent activity that would impact the county? Okay. We'll Great. take that as Thank a no. You. Perfect. No, that's, that's fantastic. Or any other subsequent events or big ticket items that may not be reflected in these financial statements that we should be discussing at this time. Perfect. Not that we're aware of. Thank Perfect. you. Perfect. Thanks so much. And uh, just the last question is everyone's comfortable with the policies and procedures in place to prevent and detect fraud or illegal acts? Yep. Yes. Thank okay. you. Okay. Perfect. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, in terms of specific topics, uh, there's just a few things here that we can talk about. Significant risks. So uh, auditing standards would require us to consider the risk of fraudulent revenue recognition and the risk of management override of controls as significant risks. Uh, the risk of uh, revenue recognition is rebuttable, which means you can say that it's not actually a significant risk based on the nature of the revenue that comes in and the, the controls that are in place. And so that is something that we have done here. So we have rebutted that fraud risk because largely the revenue comes in from property taxes, which is very verifiable and consistent year over year. Um, and so it has not been a significant risk. Um, that being said, within the risk of management override of controls, uh, the biggest test there is through journal entry testing. And so we do still consider um, anything impacting revenue as part of our journal entry testing for management override of controls. Um, so there were no issues noted with any of those things. Uh, and also a response to management override of controls, we do look through all the minutes that are available. We consider any um, estimates um, and bias in estimates uh, made by management to consider whether there's anything there. And we had no concerns um, from that perspective as well. Uh, as I mentioned before, we did not note any fraud or legal acts as part of our audit. Um, we did not note any non-compliance with laws or regulations or um, issues with related party transactions. Um, and we did have full cooperation of management of the county um, in completing the audit this year. So I'd um, like to take this moment to thank them for their help, for sure. Um, audit differences. Uh, so there are two that we noted. One was 
uh, to reduce the gravel inventory values to actual at year end. Uh, this one really just came out of um, some of our um, price testing or testing of the additions on the inventory and our sampling. Um, it's more of an extrapolated error, so again, not something we would ask management to correct. Um, it does remain, oh sorry, it was corrected to fix the value to the actual value. The other uh, one is, an, uh, is a misstatement for $992,000, and this relates to the reclamation liability on the gravel pits. Uh, it was determined this year that um, some of the assumptions being used to estimate that liability, um, w some of the costs that they thought would need to be incurred to reclamate those, those pits were not actually required, and so the management used its um, internal engineers and specialists to determine that the proper liability for that, and therefore it was a reduction of $992,000 of that liability. Um, those assumptions, nothing really is different um, than in the past, and so it is treated as an error. Um, however, it's not a material error. Again, not something that would impact the usability or the understanding of the financial statements. And so it's just corrected through the current period, um, which, is, which is fine. It's just called an out-of-period adjustment. Um, what you see here is the uncorrected portion, which means it really should have been part of last year and so would have affected the opening retained earnings. At the end of the day, ending retained earnings and everything is the same and correct, and there are no further issues really with, with respect to that. Um, performance improvement observations, so we, um, we don't actually test controls formally, we do do a substantive audit, which means we don't rely on the controls of the, of the county to uh, reduce the level of testing that we do, we just um, do the substantive testing. Um, of course, through that work, there are occasions where we might notice some performance improvement of observations or things that might increase efficiencies within um, the county, and so therefore we would talk with those with management, um, and we have done that, just um, had some conversations. None of the control deficiencies or none of the items that we've noted or discussed with management are considered a, a true control deficiency, and um, nothing needs to be communicated to the, to the council at this time. Um, sorry? Those would be the, the bigger ticket items in terms of a high-level summary. We're, we're happy to go into greater detail, but we know you have a busy agenda today, mm -hmm. so uh, maybe we can open it up to questions if there are any at this stage. Does anybody have any questions? The financial statements that you see in front of you will be very consistent in form and structure to what you will have seen in prior years. No major changes other than what we've discussed in terms of any of the estimates or the accounting policies or the disclosures or presentation style under the public sector accounting standards or municipal affairs requirements. So there are a few standards coming down the pipe in future years but those will still be a few years out and we know management is looking into those to see what kind of an impact they will have, if any, in the, in the future. I think the only thing on the financial statement that might look different to you would be the actual audit report itself. Um, it's significantly longer this year um, and that is a, a change in, in terms of auditing standards. Really what's changed is that the opinion is now first instead of the last paragraph that you read. So it really talks about our opinion, which in this case was, was an unqualified opinion. Uh, so everything was okay from that perspective. It lists out the exact statements that are included and then just more highlights in detail the responsibilities of management versus the responsibilities of the auditors and then ultimately um, ends the report. But um, nothing is really different in contact or in the conclusion with respect to that report. Does anybody have any questions regarding the financial statements? We'll just give a minute because we just received them. So.
Uh, the chair, I can answer this one. Yes, that was. So in 2017, we made that $3 million contribution, uh, which is a very <coughs> um, abnormal expenditure to the Strathmore Field House. Uh, so that one would show up in operating as we don't retain the asset itself. So we just made a contribution, I believe. Yeah. Are there any further questions regarding either the audit findings or the financial statements? I ask just a general question, Colin, uh, or, or to whoever, I guess. Um, in regards to other municipalities you do of similar size, what would you say, how does Wheatland County financially rate? Are we fairly comparable? Are we more financially stable in your opinion? Or can you give us a, some thought on that? I, I think a good level of financial stability in terms of <coughs> where you're at relative to your budget. I appreciate that this year we had a deficiency of revenue over expenses, but uh, you have to look at it in terms of the, you know, the broader plan. Certainly the key areas that, you know, we as auditors fixate on, as does municipal affairs, looking at the available room you have under your, under your debt limit, and you yourselves have a very low uh, level of borrowings in terms of financing capital and, and operations and the, the amount of cash and short-term investments available of almost $65 million, that's quite the, the nest egg in terms of having a stable base to, to build from, which is, which is good news. And despite some of the broader economic factors appreciated, there's, there's some allowance on the, uh, the taxes receivable, but not to the extent that it's putting you financially at risk as the, as the county. Well, we appreciate the work that you have done, and I thank you to our staff for the work that's been done on the finances and the cooperation with the audit. We appreciate it. Thank you. Thank, thank you, you so much. Us. Yeah, I believe we need a motion to approve the audit. A motion to approve the audit. Jason's made a motion. Any... Do you want separate? Okay. So a motion to approve the audit and the audited financial statements. Any questions or discussion? Does anybody need any more time? I don't want to rush the process with just receiving it. I think the auditors probably would like it signed by council as well while you're here. Is that possible? So. But maybe it's part of your motion to sure. also sign off on the. Jason, audit. is that part of your motion? Yep. Margaret, I'll make it. Does everybody feel prepared to vote? All in favor? Motion is carried. Thank you. A motion to accept as well. Scott's made a motion. Any questions or discussion? All in favor? Motion is carried. Before we get into our budget discussions, let's have a look at correspondence. 
There's the letter from the Minister of Municipal Affairs regarding the lighting at Highway 817 and Highway 901. I don't know if council would like to see anything come out of that. Or sorry, yes, my apologies from the Minister of Alberta Transportation on Municipal Affairs. Thanks, Helen. So they've indicated that they agree that lighting at the intersection is warranted. However, there is not funding available or not the project will be considered when funding becomes available. Currently scheduled to be completed can in I 2022. Ask, can I move that staff bring in a cost analysis of putting the lights out? We can certainly do that if you want to make a motion to that regard. Yeah, please and bring it back to council. Discussion on the motion? So you want it to look, so we're going to pay for it and maintain it before this? So if we did that, would they take it over after the fact or no? Okay. Any questions or discussion on the motion? Why would we want that information unless we're planning on putting it in? Well, perhaps we should be looking at putting it in. How many accidents have there been? How many county ratepayers have been affected because of that incident, that intersection? Yeah, just because somebody else won't step up doesn't mean we can't be the better person. And I have no idea how much it would cost. My, my query goes a little further than that. If you're going to do one, the next request that comes in, the province is going to do the, exactly the same thing. You'll end up paying for every one of them. Yeah. Any further discussion on the motion? All in favor of a cost analysis? Opposed? Motion is carried. An invitation to the under the big top. Some information about the Wheatland Housing Management Body Requisition. I don't believe we need a motion for a requisition. Is that? That's what I thought. There's some information about the designated industrial property tax requisition. I just have a question on those requisitions. How, how is that um, decided and is it, I'm just wondering how it's decided. I'm not complaining about it, I'm just wondering how, how do you decide that percentage? Okay. Well, part of the question don't you? How we like decide on the yeah. how it's shared up, yeah. it's on the equalized assessment that the province puts out okay. every year. And that's what takes so long to get it done as we're waiting for the province to do the equalized assessment. How they do the equalized assessment, I can't answer that. Okay. No, I just didn't <laughs> Maybe Brian can answer that one. But. Finally, there was some information provided regarding the invitation to join the Coalition of Canadian Municipalities for Energy Action. Uh, I don't know where uh, Council stands on this issue. I think it's an interesting topic to discuss. It's definitely a big part of our local economy, energy, uh, oil and gas, a little more gas and oil in this next of the woods, but you go a little further east and there's a little more oil. Um, we have a federal government that is dropping the ball this energy. Getting pipeline. 
that's true. And then there's like oil tanker. Discussion? Good discussion. I'll put a motion on the floor. <laughs> the discussion going. I will move that uh, we pay $1,000 for a membership fee to join the municipality coalition of municipality. Coalition of Canadian, Canadian municipalities, municipalities for, energy, for action. energy action. There's a motion on the floor. Discussion or questions? Are you guys a bunch of green, green hippies? <laughs> that won't surprise you when we vote. No, I agree. I agree with what uh, Councillor Wilson says. That, I mean, we belong to other groups that don't do cost equally on Mount and probably uh, aren't in near as as uh, beneficial. So yeah, no, I'm. I, I agree with it. I'm okay with it too. Well, uh, some of the other groups that we are going to and have initials that start with an F and end with an M, um, I think should actually be behind stuff like this too. But I, after what I've been hearing lately, I think we need to go our own way. Support of it. Any further questions or comments? There's a motion on the floor. All in favor? Opposed? Motion is carried. <laughs> we also need a motion to accept the correspondence. Any questions or further discussion regarding the correspondence? All in favor? Motion is carried. Councillor Eichert, you had a, can, can I ask an in camera. Uh, you budget. had an in camera on the budget. Did would you like to do that before we get into budget in two minutes, or would you would like no, to I, do I it? Are we okay if we start our budget discussion? I'd like to commend staff on the audit. It was a nice, clean audit, and I think any time we get an audit like that, I think some appreciation should be shown. So thanks, Brian. Absolutely. Yeah. Thank you. So we had an amended budget circulated with our council package. Good afternoon, Brian. Good afternoon. Um, so on the separate attachment, what we've done is we have the unapproved final operating budget. So there's, there's two documents, the unapproved final operating and the capital one. So maybe what I'll do first is go through the operating one. So the county's process is to 
approve an interim operating and then a final operating. So what that allows administration the chance to do is update for requisitions, any further information that we do have updated on, uh, just information on general expenses, revenue, or grants that could be coming in. So some of the county's larger expenses are the grants, or the requisitions, sorry, that we pay out. So if you, and what we've done, and we've done this in the past as well, is that we always like to highlight the changes for council, just so they don't have to go through the document, the 150 pages of both documents again. So what we would like to do is put them all in a summary, just so council can see. So the changes that we did make, uh, a lot of it was based on information. So we, we received uh, up-to-date rates for CPP, EI, WCB. We had some certain vacancies and some roles that we updated as well. Uh, so for some other, we received a CARES grant, the PERC application that was approved in December as well. So we anticipate that will be coming in for revenue in 2019. Our requisitions as well, um, so our education one, that actually came in a little bit lower than we thought. The DIP requisition came in a little higher than we thought. And the uh, Wheatland Housing Management Body one came in a little bit higher than anticipated, which is okay. And then the Drum Heller one as well. They were all within a reasonable estimate though, so it wasn't a big adjustment. Um, just to note, uh, one of the larger changes on the budget was for gravel pit payments. So, under the gravel tab of the um, operating budget, the county perch or entered into an agreement in 2018. So in 2018, we entered into an agreement to purchase land, and in the future years, agreed to purchase the aggregate within that land. So the payments for that aggregate in, in those lands is approximately $1 million for, that will occur in, from 2019 to, I guess, 2023. Uh, the other significant changes were uh, an increase to CRISP funding. So the CRISP funding increase was due to uh, the town of Strathmore being eligible for CRISP funding. So that was an increase of about 390000 uh, We've also reduced our estimate costs on IDP ICF costs. So initially in 2018, we made an estimate on those costs, how much would it cost the county? And then after kind of seeing the actuals come in in 2018, we revised our amount. So that amount actually came down about 300000 and then we also increased our fuel budget. So the fuel budgets went up. Our diesel expense was a little bit higher. In 2018, we consumed just under 1.6 uh, million liters of fuel. That's both diesel and regular. So with that is the, the carbon tax as well, which was about $170,000 increase of expenditure that the county wouldn't have had in 2016. On the revenue side, uh, for taxation, which is consists of about 89% of the county's overall revenue, we had about a 1.8% increase of the compared to the 2018 actuals. So just for council's information, in 2017, uh, compared to 16, we had a 2.2% decrease in revenue in taxation. In 2018, we had a 1.2% increase. And then in 2019, we're projected for a 1.8% increase. So overall, of the, all of those years, it's about a 1% increase over the last three years. So those are the most significant changes I'd like to kind of highlight for Council. Um, so we have this changes spreadsheet and then coming, oh, we also updated some amortization projections as well. So I believe it went from about 15.8 to about 16.6. And those are just based, that's a non-cash expense as well. So those ones don't actually impact any transfers or taxation revenue. And those are the ones highlighted in the blue color. So the, the summary page, which is currently on the projector screen, that's kind of the, the main piece of the operating budget. So all the requisitions, those are actuals received. 
Um, we haven't actually received the final number from the province yet. So there's a section under the Schools Act of Alberta that if the requisition is not received by March 15th, then we use the previous number. So realistically what will happen is probably on the, our fourth quarter payment, they'll make an adjustment based on the equalized assessment. And then at that point we will pay the, the difference and that difference we'll also collect in, in a future year, depending on if it's over or under, and that's kind of calculated in something called the over-under levy. We also update uh, our other agreements, such as the CRISP agreement, so, uh, or sorry, the CURB agreement, which is uh, for the recreation boards across the county. And we do that based on a mill rate, also the fire funding, that's also based on a mill rate as well. So based on the changes in fire with uh, Galician and Clooney uh, now being operated by the county, so that changed a little bit of the fire as well. So instead of being a, a contribution to others, that is kind of now under the county's portfolio. So that was one other kind of change in fire, and I believe both of those changes occurred in December, maybe November of 2018, so after the interim budget was approved. Anybody have any questions regarding the operating budget? This crisp funding, that was a quarter of a mail non-residential, was it not? Or yeah. Yeah. There's quite a difference. I know Strathmore is in and out, but how come we weren't taking and putting it in the reserve, the quarter of a mail all the time? Um, so what we would do is we'd raise that those funds specifically for that reason. So those funds we collected for that, what would happen is we would just take those and distribute it. So when uh, when the town of Strathmore wasn't included in that calculation in 2018, what we did was we just took that amount out and then it was kind of, it either did get included into a transfer for reserve or it just kind of went into the general operating. So it was collected but it ended up in general operating maybe? Or? So the calculation itself would be 0.25 of a, a mill of non-residential. So the calculation for everyone else didn't change. So that, right. and then we distributed the funds based on that. But if um, th those funds would have been either used for an additional transfer to reserves or could have just offset uh, general operating for that year. Okay. Because there is other items that we also would have done. So one was the additional night wash clerk position that we funded for the town and some other recreation stuff that we funded for the town as well. So it's a, it's a $300,000 difference. If I remember right, Strathmore was entitled to 200 and change? Yeah, so the town was entitled to about 189,000 uh, for both years. The, the calculation was very consistent year over year. Yeah. So the initial calculation in the interim budget was more of an estimate. So at that point, I think we just had estimated around 500. Okay, 580. yeah, we estimated 580,000. So at that point, we're still kind of making estimates on like what the assessment will be. And then after those numbers were firmed up, then we could determine the actual amount of okay. funds to be distributed to both. And that being said, included in that amount was the additional 180 thousand to the town for I just got a, I'm just, I still haven't wrapped my head around, I think I need about 26 years of this in order to get my head straight around here, but um, on page 19, um, we have a contingency of $100,000, what is that used for? Like in the administration end of things, um, page 19 and 121. I just, just interested in what, uh, and, and, and there's never any, there's never a, a, an actual showing on that, so do we not ever use that? It's just, it's yes, that's correct. So kind of what it is is 
I, I believe it has been used in the past. Um, it may not necessarily just be coded to that account. Um, so there is certain expenses that occur during the year that administration will not know of up until, you know, later on in the year kind of thing. So sometimes what will happen is if those expenses fall under there, it's just offset by that contingency amount. So n nothing ever actually gets posted to that account, but it, there is kind of like a, just a con contingency room just in case something were to kind of happen. I probably should have this on the next page. Um, Rosebud School of Arts for what did we spend the 5000 like? Why did we give $5,000 to the School of Arts? There was a request. Uh, they came into council and spoke to council, and there was a request for a $5,000 donation, and so that's what council okay, so approved. I, ju I just missed that, okay. I believe it was, and the councillor of the area might speak better to it, but it was in order for them to apply for another grant, they needed some municipal funding for a significant other grant source, if I recall correctly. Oh, look yeah. at that, it's on. <laughs> Yeah, they come in and did a presentation. I can't, I don't want to be quoted as saying, but they would use that money as leverage money because a lot of grants are not accessible unless they have municipal support. And I am still waiting to see how successful that campaign was. I haven't heard anything further to that, to that day they were in here. Has you heard anything? Uh, no, but Jack Hayden has offered to come and speak to council, so he'll be meeting, meeting with council or pre presenting. So that could be a good question for Jack. He's the board chairman for the Rosebud Schools of the Arts. Um, the contingency thing that Tom brought up, I'd never thought of this before. So if that doesn't get used, does it just get rolled back over or does it get spent elsewhere? Uh, so if the contingency funds is not used, the treatment of it would be, it would go into general unallocated surplus. I'm just thinking the way uh, we budget for everything and if you have a contingency, it kind of goes against what council is supposed to budget for. Because if anything's out of the norm, we should be getting decisions made on individual things. Am I wrong or? No, you're not wrong. Um, that contingency has been used, as Brian said in the past, for things that have councils been, like you, council has to approve things that aren't in the budget, right? No matter what. But if we don't have a contingency in there, then what ends up happening is you would exceed your, potentially you exceed your budget. Not likely. It's only a $100,000 contingency, if I remember correctly, and the budget's like 17 or 18 million. So. It's pretty insignificant in the whole scheme of things. If you just as soon seeing it take out, we, we can, that the council can make that motion to take it out for sure. It's not a problem. Most, most things we usually have a contingency, whether that's a construction project or for buying something, you know, we usually have a little bit of a contingency just in case there's an additional or something like that that pops up. So just for clarification, sorry. Uh, Cars Line Water, 4101-22501. We're budgeting WRC contracted services. We won't be budgeting that for 2019, 2020, and 21. Still happy for WRC. Somebody. Somebody. If, if it changes, we would make that adjustment in there. Uh, at this point, we're still working with WRC, so that's why it's included in there. But you're correct, if that changed okay. for 2020, yes, that would be changed. Yes, and also just to note on that, um, so that expenditure, even though we budget for that, um, it could be to another provider. Just the, the funds itself is yeah. kind of what we've allocated so far for the year. So I'm just curious why we budgeted. I, th I think because of the way the contract, we felt that's what it was going to be, but I know there was extra costs that were charged that weren't anticipated in the budget. 
Uh, we did have the full year of operation of that facility through WRC, I believe. In 2017, we didn't, so that's why there's a change in 2017. So are we assuming contractors, will we keep the 86,000 as budget, or will we? Absolutely not. I guess whatever the contract would be would be that amount that we would budget. But currently, right now, uh, I think as of last week, I believe there was a motion made by WRC to change the rates again. So I don't know that we have that information reflected in here, but I think it's going to be fairly insignificant in the whole scheme of things. And I might be wrong, but the WRC, when you get a water line break, or those are extras than compared to just to, a, to operating a water treatment plant. That's easy. But you don't know what water line's breaking, if any are breaking, or or what's breaking, or those are just things you have to budget for and hope like heck you don't have to spend them, but it's no different than the farm, break an axle or. So I don't know, Brian, if you can enlighten us, as, and I know this might be a tough question to answer right on the spot, is the 86,000 for 2019, is that based on water rates at 350, do you know? Because I know last week they they upped it, upped it to 399, I think, or four. I'm not sure, I got one report since okay. 399, the other one's at four. Last year, we were paying seven bucks. Then we brought it down to 350, and last meeting it's back to four bucks. I'm thinking four bucks is oh. probably a, a closer th target, but it was seven bucks last year is so what we were paying. This helps me explain the contingency. Seeing as we don't know what a WRC is exactly going to be at, it's hard to nail that down. Uh, I hate to use that as an ex excuse, but it's not an excuse. Um, the 86 may not be 100% accurate e either, depending on where things go with that, right? Um, and I'm a proponent of tr have an extra in the budget and not spending it than not having enough in the budget and having to borrow from reserves. And then at the end of the year when you get your financial report, you can put some in reserves or you can uh, lower taxes next year. It's, it's just a more prudent way of, of planning, I think. So I think just to reiterate, anything that's related to WRC at this point may not be the best budget number that we could come up with. Hopefully as we get experience this year, next year, we can nail it down that we will be definitively on the mark. And bearing a big breakdown, like Glenn said, or bearing a situation where we have lower water consumption or higher water consumption because of leaks or weather conditions or what have you, so. I guess a case in point, last year, Standard and Rocky Ford being similar, Standard's a little bigger. I think Standard's cost for extra repairs was about 5,000, and Rocky Ford's I think was north of 100,000, just because of breaks. So I don't know how this year is gonna pan out for them. But 100,000 on Rocky Ford, I don't know what you would do for the county, really. Yeah, so just kind of the same idea then for Rosebud Water, uh, contracted services jumped over from actuals 10 grand, just kind of the same thing, budgeting for uh, actuals last year was 43,000, 19 was nine, budgeting. We, last year we budgeted uh, 45, we were under budget at 43, but now we're budgeting at 54. Because I think what we're anticipating is because of the water rate is now at 350, we're anticipating it is going to be slightly higher than what we had before. But last year was, it was at 7, you said? The $7 is not reflected in the income because the county sets water rates that are not the same as actual costs and we never have expenses i'd like to know what page of rosebud water
without looking at sorry through the chair without looking at the actual invoices I wouldn't know exactly why that uh, increase in there I think it's like you say it's more of a, a, a buffer at this point until we firm up the, the contracted <coughs> rates and, and that sort of thing um, I guess it would be real helpful if we knew, you know, and we'll know in another year, hopefully we'll have enough history with WRC that we can be definitively be more accurate in our budget. No, I'm looking at, you know, I'm just looking generally. So, I, I believe where it's getting narrowed down to where they can actually pay some bills too, yes. Um, we're going to go back to pay, uh, and, and you, you touched on it, on, um, on contracted services under the peace officer, which is where the night, the night uh, or the watch clerk is. Are, we spend somewhere around 65000 is what we've agreed to pay for the watch clerk, and yet we've got 110000 So what else falls into that category? Well, the problem is, is uh, the town of Strathmore didn't invoice us like they were supposed to for 2018. I think that's the answer. Uh, so. Um, yeah, but it's budgeting forward at that same number. So the, this one, actually, uh, I can explain very well. Okay. So the, <laughs> the the contracted peace services, or contracted services for peace officers, so in there, what there is is $65,000 towards the night watch clerk. There's also another, an additional 33500 for the reclamation to Clooney, the old, th there's a property in Clooney that council made a resolution for to go in and remediate that property. So it, it falls under that. So take 65 plus 33. So we're sitting at about 100. And then there are miscellaneous properties throughout the county which need uh, contracted services which are enforced by our peace officers. So that being like mowing, cleanup. So what we'll do is we'll hire a contractor and those costs come out of this budget specifically. So what, what we do is we have another buffer for things like that. Those. Some of those funds are recovered through uh, a transfer to tax. So there's a, a section in the MGA that allows us to transfer services provided to a role back onto the role. So that's kind of how the county recovers that. Okay, so you, you're so we're basically basically we're looking at thirty three thousand. It just is to do general cleanup, but that falls underneath this. And so you're just using that number going forward. Yes. Um, so realistically, that 110 may change in the future. So I, I wouldn't anticipate that we would have a property that would require about $35,000 worth of cleanup. Um, the night watch clerk position, that's really up to council if we choose to continue to fund that position. And then, but the, the other 10,000, I would anticipate that's probably a, a reasonable buffer. There certainly are properties in the county that are enforced on a, an annual basis or a regular basis and sometimes there's ones that just aren't uh, are irregular but they do pop up and they do need enforcement or to, to hire contracted services to so if that. you look at 2017 actual it's 10,000 if you look at 2018 budget it was 64 which was the amount for the watch clerk and about 10,000 additional we ended up at 50. None of that's watch clerk, right, Brian? We never paid anything for the watch clerk in 2018 because we never got invoiced by the town of Strathmore in, in that year. So that 50,000 is all cleanup stuff, right? Um, so there, there is a portion of the night watch clerk in there. I believe it's about 40,000. So unfortunately, we just hadn't received the bill for it. However, on the accounting side of it, what we have to do is we have to book an entry for it because it, it's an expense agreed upon in that year. Um, so there's a, I think it's 43,333 that's in there for the night watch clerk, if I do remember correctly. As you recall, that started in May. Yeah. So that's why it's not the full year. This year it will be, is it 56? I can't remember the number. If it's 56, it's 56. Yeah, 65, but yeah, that, the, the initial contract was from May 1 to April, or yeah, May 1 to April 30th. So it kind of just falls in that thing. And it just, how the agreement kind of fell. Sorry, just another question. Uh, I'm asking.
And sorry, I don't have the, the notes on that. Yeah, this, so this one, we had taken portions of the, the sewer flushing and that sort of thing for the, the save WRC on there. So yeah, that would be the, just the contract services. So all of our manhole replacements, all of our flushing, all those sorts of things, we used to have them in the capital fund. We've actually moved them into the operations now. So that's why we've taken that funds out of capital. And that's why you see the... So as far as supplies, that's mainly just the uh, the additives that we may add to that lagoon, that sort of thing. Um, those were covered under general sewer prior to this. So they are a little more specific now. Yeah, exactly. Got a question that uh, Stuart can answer on uh, page 27 of the it's fire services. Um, Salaries, fire services. <clears throat> Is that does that include the honorariums? Like, like there's no honorarium. So, the four the four hundred and twelve thousand that we're budgeting, is that now including, um, uh, like the 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 little, uh, not the per diem, but the little sums that we're giving our uh, our firefighters that are that are working there. So like, um, I actually do all the budgeting for all the the wages, benefits, all that kind of stuff. So oh, okay, I think okay. Stuart might not be able to answer oh, yeah, that okay, one, which enough, is totally yeah. fair to for him. Um, so that does actually include all the honorariums for everyone. So in addition to that, after the interim uh, operating budget was approved, we also uh, inherited two additional associations. So those funds would also have gone up marginally for those two associations that we would have to pay those volunteers. Anything to do with the fire associations is not shown on here. We don't deal with that. Yeah, the only piece of a fire association that's included in the fire operating budget is our 60% contribution towards assets, and that's an expense for the county. And the operating grant that we provide out of a, the mill rate, there's an operating grant, but we don't we don't pay any 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 salaries or stipends or anything like that to the associations for for, for all the tier five funding. I don't know. Oh, I think that was the other thing. But just before, yeah. uh, these operating grants were given to fire associations. Uh, there was uh, an agreement years ago of, I can't think of the exact numbers, 50,000 for seven of the associations, and the other two got 60,000. And they, whatever it was, I mean, two got more than the other seven because of the workload. They took that money and they paid their strip pens and everything else out of that money. So since then, we've inherited these as farmer associations. Their budget, and they're including their strip pens, everything we give them, does it still less than or equal to, I guess, equal to that original number? Or have we increased their contributions from the county? Um, so the original amount that we, that funding agreement still has not changed. Right. So the only thing that has really changed in that agreement is now instead of uh, the fire associations of Clooney and Gleeson, instead of them receiving a check, uh, the associate, association receiving a check, now it's just we, uh, I guess, operate the association on their behalf. Yeah, so we, we inherit the expenses. So kind of on this line right here, um, so this would kind of be like the telltale sign. So write that on 223.00.2272 
is the actual in 2018 was about 400,000 and then say take off about 140,000, you're kind of sitting at that 271. So that's an expense we don't actually pay out in check funds, but now we actually keep it and we administrate that program. So based on that, our expenses for the fire department, like our fire association expenses in our actual Wheatland County budget will go up and it will go up based on us providing the supplies, us paying the volunteers, and just other just general maintenance on buildings and kind of stuff like that. Is it gonna go up by the same number that that association number went down? Um, I, when I kind of did the budget and just kind of looking at it, I, I believe that the expense out would be less than the expenses that we incur. However, we should probably wait for a full year to kind of at least analyze the, the data after it's done. Okay, because going back to Tom's question, the, what was traditionally paid that association money, they took their strip pans out of that money. The associations at Rocky Ford get the same grant as that was agreed to, but they don't take their strip pans out. They leave that money in and they let that accumulate and and they buy whatever they want to buy. That's their money. So my interest was, since the county's looking after Strathmore West, has our cost increased and more than, are they the same as when they were an association? I think that maybe that's the way I should word it. Yeah, so they're gonna working on a report to come back. They just haven't okay. had a chance to finish okay. that. You have to also keep in mind, since, since uh, the Strathmore Rural Fire Station disbanded, now Wheatland County receives all the revenue yes. from those fire calls. And that's and that one in particular is quite substantial because yeah. of Highway 1. So uh, Stuart and Brian are working on that. So yeah. hopefully we can bring that back for this April 16th meeting, that history for you. So, yeah, that's yeah. exactly what I want. Page 71, uh, Rosebud Sewer Utilities Electricity. What, uh, there obviously something happened because we're way over budget this year. Uh, 500, we budgeted for. I know the answer to that. Perfect. Answer it? That's probably the symbiotic. That's symbiotic. Okay. Because we. Line item 24209-2543, utilities, electricity. Um, Is yeah, that through the symbiotic? Chair, that's definitely the, the uh, symbiotic okay. process. Okay. Yeah. You get the proof is squishy. Yeah. You, get the, you get the royal turd. <laughs> um, page uh, 31. Yeah. Uh, safety day expenses like twenty five thousand dollars. I'm just like, how, how is that? Legal issues. They pulled the gun. No, it's not legal, <laughs> but it's down the line, right? So I'm just trying. To... All entailed in that is that everybody's. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Uh, yes. Yeah, so through the chair, that amount for twenty five thousand, kind of what. That used to be embedded in just different expenses in safety day. So if I were to kind of come up with just a general idea of what, what's in that fund, so there would be guest speakers, which I'd probably put around maybe 12,000. Uh, the, the, the meal itself, which was, you know, you, there's probably 150 people, so that could be around 4,500 bucks. So that's like 16,000. Uh, there's some awards that are in there as well. Um, I believe this year, the, the awards are based on a WCB rebate and us having a, a core audit certification still. So our WCB rebate this year, the rolling average is down a little bit. So I believe the, the actual award at the end is nil to nothing kind of thing. Um, yeah, and then there's just general miscellaneous like food and kind of other stuff. So. Uh, 
I believe the initial reason why this amount increased, I'd have to take a look at it again, but I know at one point what was going to happen is that there was going to be a operator under recreation and then instead of the operator going under recreation, the operator is now moving under uh, Hamlet. As for the other piece, I'm guessing there was probably another uh, position added there as well. I'm not quite sure. I can certainly get back to you on that one though. It is, yeah. yeah. Brian, I'm trying to follow and maybe you can help me sort through our total reserves, where I would look. Like, I see transfers in and transfers out, and I know some are uh, like designated. Can you just help me understand that better? sort of our overall yes so the re reserve pieces on the final page of the yeah, capital I have budget that. Um, so those are kind of like intertwined I guess right. um, that's kind of one downfall of I guess the reporting being on two separate ones um, so if we take a look at the very last page of the capital budget what we have is our our opening balance as of January 1 2019 so what that is, is it's literally what was on the audited financial statement that was approved today. Uh, we have interest on those reserves that just kind of sit there. Um, so those are reserves specifically put against the funds that sit in those reserves. The transfers to reserves, which is in the operating. So what those are, those are in the operating budget and those go into this capital one. And then the transfers from capital budget are the pieces that are funded out of the capital budget. So if you take a look at this last page, so the opening balance is what's on our audited financial statement. So that's as of today's date. The interest on reserves is just kind of a generic calculation that's put into our reserves. And that's right. Right here, the second column. Um, so this first column is what was approved today. Oh, sorry about that. Yeah, I could. It's okay. I'm uh, I'll just keep using this one, I guess. Uh, so then the transfers to reserve. So those are the ones that are in the operating budget itself. I think they're just below 10 million, I think nine point, yeah. And then uh, transfers from the operating budget. So the only one that really gets transferred uh, to, like into the operating budget is the fire one. And it's just kind of the way it's been calculated since I've been here anyway. So that's those uh, funds to the associations. And then the transfers, this is the transfers from the capital budget, and that's like for purchases itself. So realistically, at the end of the day, if everything goes through exactly on budget, and these two columns, the transfers two, will go through as budgeted. These ones are good. Uh, the first column is also good as well. And this one, it, it's realistically <laughs> the last column that could vary on, uh, on the actual budget itself. So when you kind of take a look at the grand total, the total of reserves, if everything were to go through on budget and every project was complete, kind of the total ending reserve balance would be 32 million. Sorry, another question. 75. It's not a, like, this is just totally curiosity. Um, y you know, <laughs> through the chair, I, I, I believe the, I, I believe the cemetery, uh, budget and portfolio itself is just kind of getting off the ground. Um, there really haven't been too much actuals posted into this one. There just hasn't been many expenses. Uh, I believe our community services manager is kind of working on something this year to kind of get things going, such as maintenance and stuff, but. Um, no, I'm good with it. So long as yeah. it doesn't split, if it splits, <laughs> then I 
it, if it flips, we'll uh, certainly discuss that with council. <laughs> since we're on the tr on the reserves thing last year we spent way more we lost 13 million dollars in reserves is that what it's looking like Without um, going to the audited statement but. so what the kind of audited statement shows uh, Matthew Um, so maybe just going back to that last audited statement itself. Um, Looks like an increase of four million. Well, no. Yeah. So I, I believe um, the the comment was about. Is it about the reserves or is it about the the reserves on our page here? One hundred twenty-one. It looks like we. We went down 13 million. That's what we started is with 48 for million year. and we ended with 32 million. Oh, that's the budget. That's the budget. Oh, yeah, okay, then. Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah. Uh, my apologies on that one. Uh, so, yeah, just to grab my previous comment about the okay. audit financial statement. Um, so, yes, that, that is correct. If every project were to go through, and everything, every single project was completed in the capital budget, uh, the, the reserves would go down to 32 million. Are there any provisions in the budget to bring it back up? Uh, Are we gonna continue to spend till it's all gone? Realistically, Realistically, that would be a decision for council to make. Yeah, um, so if council chose to increase reserves or decrease spending, um, we can increase revenue or we can decrease expenditures. Um, that's kind of the, the simple, I guess, nuts and bolts answer. Um, but I guess currently in this budget, there's nothing in there to increase the reserves. No, so right now, as it kind of sits on this specific document, uh, the transfers in would be the 9.1, and then the right. transfers out would be 900,000. The amount spent would be the 25 million. That's under the capital one itself. Mm -hmm. So I think in, in years past, our budgets were know what the word would be we always had a surplus in the last couple of years we've not had a surplus and we'd always put the surplus into reserves last year we spent reserves mm -hmm. we can't continue I shouldn't be look, looking at Brian and talking like at the council we can't continue doing that I realized maybe last year we had some bigger projects but still something to think about Uh, through the chair, I'd have to take a look at that actual very specific line item. Um, I'm guessing there could be other kind of things in there, such as uh, equipment replacement, kind of stuff like that. But that's another item I could also get back to you on, um, just to determine what actually is in that one. Yeah, through the chair, the, that uh, included the security system monitoring and that sort of thing for there. We have a that's correct, yeah, it's it's incorporated with that as well. Correct. Okay. 
Yeah, and for, for the most part, the account names are like fairly consistent and accurate. Um, some of them are just very generic, though, which certainly uh, sometimes is a little bit difficult to explain the, the smaller line items in there. Um, so the Galician WID expense, and uh, that could just be kind of a, a generic thing as well, like the the line item. But on the Hamlet of in the Hamlet of Galician, each utility account is charged a, a WID rate, and that's very specific to that Hamlet. So that's kind of why that shows up. So we kind of just recover that amount from the ratepayer. That's correct. So with that whole project, mm -hmm. I feel bad. I right. no, I, okay, but should that? But the license isn't attached to where the water goes. The license stays with the municipality. Where the water? Which is the Bow River, yes. But I mean. We could still retain the license, and the conveyance fee could go to one reservoir. It should be able to, and we retain the licenses because all we're doing is there. That's kind of what with WID. What I realized after is Rocky Ford's still paying, and we're still paying. When it should have, we eliminated two sources. It should go to one. The conveyance should change because they're only going to one source. The licenses are still ours, irregardless of where, because they're just the the pipeline, so to speak, to get the water there. Yeah, we can have a further discussion with David on that at WID, but from my understanding, it, it's just a diversion at a different point. Yeah. So we still hold the license. We still have to pay the conveyance, from my understanding. But I can have a discussion with WID and see if they can bill it directly to WRC. Yeah, we can do that. It should, in theory, be cheaper. But that's just and just to they are okay. coming to WID and for me this morning, uh, David informed me this morning, that they are going to the WRC on in the April meeting to talk about the conveyance as well. So. Just to note that specific line item for the WID charge Galician, the 14103-1443. So that one is something that we bill out to the ratepayer and what we collect. So the initial question was more on the revenue side, and that's kind of why that is. It, it's broken out separately on the, the bill that we send out for Galician. Uh, question. Back down to the bottom of operating budget 85. I'm just curious what the what we're budgeting legal recreation for 70,000, considering we didn't budget anything in previous years. You're on a different page. In the 75. 85. 85. 85. On community services. Old recreation. Um, so I believe that amount was in there from prior discussions that we had had. So that 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 I had had with uh, staff members. So that amount hadn't changed from the interim budget. So that amount, I don't anticipate would change. I don't think there's much going on in that specific thing. 
I know there are a couple of projects that the county wants to work on in regards to legal and recreation property, specifically ones that are association owned on county lands. So that's one piece of it anyways. Um, as for the other large chunk, I have to go back and take a look at my notes for that one specifically. And then the next uh, line item down, contract, well, two down, contracted services recreation. What would that be? It's jumped up from budgeted 12,005 last year to 76,005. And then back down to 35 next, next year. So I'm just curious what is with that large increase. I'm guessing that that amount is for a master plan for recreation. That, that's my initial thought. Um, I'd have to go back to kind of the staff and kind of determine if that is actually the case, but that's my initial assumption. Are we doing a master plan? Yes, and that one also would have like other repairs to facilities, so yeah. So at the end of the day, I guess if there's no other questions we wanted to make you aware of the one change that was done in the capital budget that the Ag service board shop Brian has readjusted that and then we would be looking for a motion for the three-year operating and the five-year capital budget at some point I think council may still have questions on the capital I think we were just looking so far well we went to reserves on the capital Does anybody have any other questions regarding the operating budget? Sure. Yeah. Well, because the reserves tied into both, so that's why I brought it forward now. Somebody prepared to make a motion? on the operating budget. Tom has moved. Any further questions or discussion? All in favor? Motion is carried. Questions regarding the capital budget, unless Brian, if you have commentary before we start questions. The only commentary I'd like to add is maybe there's three specific projects. Um, there's one for Rosebud Wastewater. Uh, that one was not included in the interim capital budget, but there was a council, council resolution after the interim budget. So that project is for $3.5 million. That project specifically we're hoping to get uh, grant funding on, and that grant funding is the, the grant funding summary is also on the, the very last page of the, the document, so page 31. Um, and that's the AMWWP grant. I believe it has to do with Alberta wastewater kind of program. Some, that, I believe that's what the acronym stands for. Um, just another thing I'd like to note is that there's an, just an upgrade or an update on the Gleeson Arena. So the ice plant itself was fixed. Um, that's fully operational. And then there's about 700,000 remaining in that. So that was a previous council resolution as well. And then the last piece uh, that council has discussed today was about the ASB billing expansion. So in 2019, there was $2 million budgeted for, and then in 2020, there was $1.2 million budgeted for. However, based on council discussion this morning or this afternoon, um, they want to move that down to 500,000. So that's just the only amendment on this document that I know of as of right now. 
So might as well jump right in, right? So we already talked about <laughs> this today, the erosion protection, 50,000 line item, 640-00661005. What does council think about that? I think we should be making a decision whether to include that in our budget or not. I don't care. <clears throat> I, <clears throat> excuse me. I don't. I have no problems including it in the budget, but I, I would really like to, like, administration get back to us on. Just because we say it's in the budget doesn't, doesn't mean, mean we, we give. Have we have to spend that money, and 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 if, if we can agree on that, and that is the plan going forward, then I've got no problems with that, with that there, because if it's an actual fifty thousand um, dollars. Temporary erosion fix. I've got a real issue with that. So, and then the only other thing, big line item, same page, is the outdoor rink upgrades in Carsland. We are ninety-nine, pretty much a hundred grand uh, higher than expected. So I'm just. That's a that's a big change, and I don't know if the needs are. Yeah, so I can explain the cars land. Um, Dave went through and readjusted those based on the information that uh, he has now. And with cars land, it would need a hard surface. That's why it's gone up. Originally, he just put a flat 220, and that would be a board system. So now with the hard surfacing, uh, that's why that increased. So. Cheadle, uh, the 40,000, he's uh, determined that, that would get it up to snuff and Gleeson, because it only gets used sporadically, like once or twice a season, um, it's adequate now, so there's no cost there. So those have drast drastically re been reduced from where they were before, because I think they were all at 220 before. So, so, that, so that's the rationale behind that one. So. Cars line was totally removed, so if there was to be one put back in, ideally you'd like to put a pad in and then it can be used for other things like roller hockey in the summertime um, because it wouldn't have an ice plant, so obviously, you know, the seasonal conditions would only dictate that you would only get two months or three months of service out of it. So, so that's the rationale. So the 322 would give you a really good um, dodge type arena with a good pad and everything like that. Wouldn't be a Cadillac, but it would be a dodge, really good. I, I'm just. That's a lot of money. Yeah, for you know, like if you go back to this past winter, and you go back to what at at Carsland or sorry at Chilo, which is the one I'm. I mean, we didn't get ice in there until mid January, and then it got so freaking cold that no one. You know, I. I mean, this is. I, I I I sort of think like I don't mind spending the money in the communities, but I. There's got to be. I think there should be some sort of consultation here that whether or not the communities want that money spent on that kind of money spent on that one that one item like if we're going to spend three hundred and twenty two thousand dollars could we not in Carson maybe the residents in Carson have different ideas maybe they want a cat sanctuary <laughs> and that's where a master recreation plan comes into play right because the master recreation plan would involve that consultation and give you that but we don't Unfortunately, we don't have a current master recreation plan for the county to do that. So, you know, you, so the council could certainly remove that from the 2019 budget, depending on what the area councilor says, and we could consider that in a future budget for sure. But to do it right, that's what we're going to need to require. So, so I was at the meeting when the community came out to uh, when Dave was, um, you know, wanting to know what they wanted. I mean, I don't know what else you would put there, but there was 20, 25 people there. I mean, I, there wasn't, um, most of them were from PB Club or Lions Club, and those are all the community, big, strong volunteer groups. Um, and we do have a lot of youth in, in Carsland. So I don't know what else they would do for. Yeah, no, I, I just like, and that doesn't just But going back to Glenn's point, we've got, we're taking 13 million out of the reserves. 
we've got to look at priorities. There's a departure from the way we tr the counties usually run. Standard is putting in an outside ice surface. I don't think the town or this village of standards put one penny into it. I know the county donated a pile of gravel to it, but the arena board is the one who dug the hole and is leveling it out, and they're going to cement it over probably this summer. Now, for budget purposes and how much we're giving, we got on the budget here, we're going to put a pad in Carsland and the county's footing the whole thing. And it's no different than we did earlier with the uh, wreck thing in Galician. We're taking the money-making capabilities, the decision out of the hands of the residents, and the county's doing it. Traditionally, the, organ the villages or the organizations have raised the money and built it, and they went around asking for donations. And most of the time, the counties helped out when we could. But now it's completely flipped. We're going to do it, and do you want it or not? We're having a hard time wondering if we should even ask them if they want it. It's different to ask for something, and you're not paying for it. It's entirely different to ask for something, and you have to dig in your pocket. So that's the difference. And is that the road we're going to go down? Because it's just going to... It's just not going to stop at Carsland, and it's going to go all the way to the east side of the county. Is that what we want? Then our, but our surplus, our reserves is gone. It's finished. And we'll be no different than the cities catching up to recreation. And if that's the way we want to go, I would be very careful about that. Cheadle was entirely different. Cheadle decided they wanted a rink. They come in here and they said that. We had curb money. They worked. They, and they got their rink. And the county went and looked at it. Oh, God, there's a cracked board in it. We've got to get it fixed up. But I see it's, it's uh, th there it is. But that's the difference. I know it's on county land. But the arena and standard is on town land. The arena and Rocky Ford is on town land. They don't put any money into it. Be careful. I know we're talking just re recreation here, but um, we have actually three of the um, community clubs uh, applied for curb. Mm -hmm. They don't know. This is this is what the quote came in as a 322. I don't know if uh, they've been approved for their curb funding that they've asked for, but they are trying to get some curb funding for this. Um, when we look at, at other things that the community of Carsland has wanted, um, I don't feel that we've asked for a lot. I really don't. The community has, is uh, trying to support them themselves. But when you... Um, you, can, you can have it in the budget and still try to get community support sure but where where do you uh where do you say that um you know like a percentage of funding that goes to other things in the communities and other programs um that that uh, we pay like let's say at, at, we're going off topic by going to uh, wfcss I, I don't see cars then listed there anywhere I, I just think that they're they're they really wanted an arena. They were trying for arena, and there's no, I think that was out of their, their scope. Mm -hmm. So they're trying to go for an outdoor one. So someone came in and, and tried to uh, tell them how much it was going to cost them. So this is where that number came from. I don't know if Carsland is, 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 is even know how much you guys want to give them. Like, I don't think they should be punished for not or say that they're not a community that's going to be trying to help help support this too. So I just like you've got I understand where you're coming from Donna that they they couldn't have one thing so they picked the next best thing which is just as which is not 
near as expensive, but it's still quite pricey. I mean, if they ever want a indoor rink, we're going to have to start look on the west side for their residents. We're going to have to start looking to save money where we can. I'd rather put this money into an indoor rink on the west side than try to build up something that's going to cost 322000 right? Like, they, they're going to have to start making costs. You want a path down to the Bow River. I mean, that's quite expensive. We're going to have to start prioritizing what the residents want. They can't have everything. I know you guys don't ask for a lot, and you don't get a lot by any means, but it's it's going to change in the next few years is my thinking. And next few years, we can't just spend this and then give them a rink and paths. I mean, they're going to have to look at Will they sacrifice the rink for the outdoor rink for an indoor arena somewhere within five, ten minutes, and maybe paths two years from now? Right? Like they got to start thinking that. I can't. That that's a lot of money, and there there's going to be a lot of money flow to that area in the next few years. I think it's more than that. We put two million dollars into Galicia to fix up the arena there. But it was either that or boarded up. That couldn't make ice anymore and the roof was leaking. And it was do it now or we won't have ice in it type of thing. That was hard. This is a, a newer build. I'm not saying Carsland doesn't deserve anything or they're not getting their share. But still, there's a lot of county out there. What about Mirfield? Or I don't know. It would be nice to have ratepayers come and raise money, no different than the fire hall. They've got I see a reserve here of two hundred and eighty five thousand or something, I think I seen. Or might have been more or less, but whatever it is, they're raising money to get a fire hall. We're putting in sixty percent. We got some some and it's no different than anywhere else in the county. That's traditionally what's been happening. Dallum didn't have a fire hall for years. They want a fire hall. They come in and ask, well, yeah, we'll go ahead. And they raised some money and uh, they got their 60% and they built a fire hall. They got some fire trucks, we put in 60%. They put the rest in, they got the volunteers. I think for me, living on the east side, I have a I have a concern of where our ideologically thinking we are going. If Carsland was the, or anybody, let's say Rocky Ford comes in and they want a new curling rink, there the curling rink's broke, and if it costs a million bucks to build a curling club. They raised forty thousand, four hundred thousand dollars, and asked us for sixty percent, or asked us for a pile of gravel like Standard did. I'd have, I'd be more inclined to do it that way. Not much different than the fire, or fifty-fifty, whatever council decides on the day. Give them the freedom to choose where they want to spend their money. If that's what they want, let them say this is what we want and this is what we're going to build towards just my thoughts but i understand what you're saying and and i agree to it at some points um the problem that we had though was that funding model was used for some of these places and then we turns and we find out that uh it wasn't at the right standard, so to speak, or built the right way, so that money is now um, almost has to be spent twice. And I, that's where it's hard to answer that question. Like, you know, you can do it at this level, and you'll never, hopefully, never have a problem with it, but it's way too much, in my opinion, way too much money. And then you don't have the public consultation. I think Nangia Hall, um, Lyalta Hall, they all got their things that they've raised themselves, they got their ball diamonds, they've got all the stuff there. And they may have got some Chris funding or whatever to do it. But uh, yeah, the county never went in and did it at all, or maintains it or looks after it or does any of that. So I understand what you're saying. 
Go ahead. So going in through the cars line, you take the $322,000 out. Um, and so now we are left without a, any kind of a hockey rink or skating rink. Because not everybody's going to use the arena. People just want to go down. Kids want to just go down and skate. And it is used. Um, where do we go from there? Do we just uh, gather up as a community and put something together ourselves? I'm, I'm not saying take, for say, take the 300000 out. I'm saying we should think about the way we spend it. The community comes in here and they've got three hundred thousand, a hundred thousand raised, and they need two hundred. That's a different equation to me. But what I'm hearing here, it's three hundred and twenty for a pad, and we don't know. Yeah, there was a meeting. I would like to see more traditional way we've been spending money. We just spent 13 million extra last year and we put in the pot. We're not going to continue. There's almost a million dollars there. 700 for the Gleeson Arena and we've already spent a million and a half and another half a million, there's another two million. A few more years and taxes will have to double to, to put gas in it. Just this is a long term shift in the way we've been doing it and we haven't did any long-term planning to fund it we're going down a slippery slope i caution against it well i think what's happening with meetings because i didn't know about the meeting either i just happened someone else asked me about it so i went but what's happening is you're you're taking down the equipment the residents then have a uh, county employee that um, is a liaison for them and they're speaking for their wants and that liaison person is just telling us what their wants are and that's where I think the meetings and the communication is going is through your your rec, rec recreation and parks but I, Alex not like I set up a meeting and asked them and and told them to Tell them what you want and we'll put it in the budget. I never said anything like that. It's coming through this tearing all that stuff down is where it's all come from. And that's maybe why it's changed. But if you want to change it to some kind of a matching grant, I think it's just something that people need to know and the communities need to know. Okay, I believe a few years ago went to Rosebud and tore that down or they took it down and they built up a new one and, and they got their own little grants and they built it. Nightingale's got one, never had one before. Uh, Gleason got their store down and the county just went in, is going in and building it. You see the discrepancy between different areas? Which are you referencing in Nightingale? Hmm? Sorry. What were you There's talking about? There's a little night playground in Nightingale and they got some. Yeah. It's fixed up quite nice there and they've, they spend their money on what they want in the community. Again, I'm saying I'm not, I don't mind the 300,000 in there. It's how we're spending it without thinking about it. I'm not being hard on, it's the same feeling I had when we had the swing set going to Galician. It's my exact same sentiments. And, and I see it in this budget reflecting more. I, I look at it there and I think, we haven't had it. So two notes for clarification. Brian, can you uh, point out what happened with our reserves between 20, uh, the end of fiscal year 2017 to 2018? Because I think Deputy Reeve Kester was mentioning like a decrease in $13 million with our previous budget, and I don't think that that was accurate. Like I see our cash and short-term investments went up four million dollars between 2017 and 2018 I just want to be clear in my own mind if we're like what the trend has been with our reserves go to the last page but that's for our budget for 2019 I'm just wondering previous trends I 
I know on the cash flow it's it's tricky. These the financial audited or the audited financial statements aren't numbered, but on the statement of cash flows. We have to split those two. Yeah. <laughs> it's so the restricted reserves themselves in 2017 went from 50 million down to 48.8. So it was about a yeah. 1.2 million dollars yeah. and that's during on, this fiscal year. That's on the restricted side. So there was a deficit of about 2 million and on that piece sometimes there is like unknown liabilities that come up and so we get information uh, like about an environmental liability that the county may have. So that's a pretty big swing. Um, and then stuff that doesn't show up necessarily in the, in the reserves or in the assets are um, non-financial assets. So the county purchased a significant uh, amount of aggregate last year. So realistically, if you look at the total of TCA, uh, wait a second. our total uh, accumulated surplus on note 10. So, and this is on the financial statement, sorry. It, it went down about, I think 2.5 million and that's literally just the deficit that we had. And what that accounts for is all the TCA we added, the reserves and the inventory for consumption. However, council must, or must consider that, you know, if the reserves do go down, there is certainly a way to make them back up. It's just spending less on TCA in a future year. So even our current financial position, as uh, Mr. Mitchell stated earlier, is a very good goose egg kind of thing, or a nest egg, I should say. And it, it is important to keep that. However, it, it's just the balance of how much tangible capital assets that council wants to move forward with. So year over year, the the estimate or the the actuals have been around 23 million or around there is is what we actually add. But the thing is that sometimes we don't receive a grant, so we don't go forward with the project. Like a great example in this current capital budget is the Rosebud wastewater system. So we have projected that to be. Uh, a grant from the A W or A M W W P, which is three million dollars. So if we don't receive that grant, it's unlikely that we go ahead with that, un unless it's a a priority that council wants us to go through with, which we'll have to find another source of funding. And currently, that total cost of that project is in that yes change yeah. in the reserve. So uh, yeah, I think maybe five hundred thousand of that project would be in the change of reserve. And then three million would be a part of the grant. And so our actual TCAs between 2017 and 2018 went up by about six million dollars. Yeah, and what that would be is amortization of about 16.4 million, which is again non-cash expense, and then the additions of 23 or 24 kind of thing. Again, I'm just going on the last page of our here in the beginning of the year. January 1st, 2019, $48,802,948. And on December 31st, 2019, $32,084,076. A difference of $13,166,200. No, said that wrong. $13,166,284. And I know they're just numbers, and I know things are different every year, but that's. I just was trying to clarify for that it's not necessarily a trend that our reserves are depreciating at the rate that is potentially projected for 2019. And, and again, just to, I'll go to the audited financial statements. We were in deficit last year and the year before, so it's immaterial to me. I'm not worried that we're going to have to be going to the food bank tomorrow. <laughs> no, that's not the point. <laughs> it was years the building to get it there, and we got two years of decline. Let's. I think it deserves looking at. Are we going to continue going into the decline, or and we're declining for very good reasons? The difference in linear, or and we're hearing the linear may never recover. So our spending has to change. We 
can't keep going until we're broke. And then say, oh, look at that. We've got no linear left. Blame it on that. No, it don't work like that. I think there's other aspects to look at, too. We've heard rumors of wealth. Wealthy counties going to have wealthy municipalities going to be having a wealth distribution of some sort to those that are an equal uh, county equalization, a municipality equalization for some sort. I would rather not see. I'd rather see us slightly diminish, diminish our reserves and put that money into our community's pockets rather than keep our reserves at 60 mil, 50 mil. And in the next 15 years, half of that's taken away and put somewhere else. I mean, that is something that I'm worried about. As I am the youngest one here and I'll have to live through it. Yeah, I'll yeah. be in Wyoming. Okay, can I just finish one more topic on the cars then? Yeah. Um, <coughs> we, <laughs> it's a good thing I should be sad. Um, I, w I would rather see that be taken out of the budget until we have a rec master plan. So I'm going to make a motion that we remove uh, the Cars Land outdoor rink upgrades until we have a until we are done with the rec master plan for the county. I just have a, a thing with that is that some of that, none of that was used that was given to everybody. And uh, I don't know where it's at now. And um, some of it was used in, in other communities, but not in ours. Like we did everything ourselves, I believe. I don't know where it is. Cheeto used forty thousand dollars. Yeah, I think no, I don't remember. Cheeto used some, and did Glisha use any? I think. I think minor repairs were done. Yeah, in minor Glisha, repairs. Very minor. I don't and they think they were. Kind of Just because if that plan isn't done for this year, if we could have some kind of um, balance in there, that would get us going, to let us at least skate next winter um, oh. as I said before I don't mind leaving that money in there it's the spending of it I think we have to consider and if and if uh, I'm just one person but I'm not in favor of taking it out at this time I can leave it in there it's only I don't want to say it flippantly it's three hundred thousand dollars but the end of the year, if we have a surplus of three hundred thousand, I don't mind uh, putting that in reserves. And if we spend it in between time, it's not much different than the wash pad to me. I, I think it stays there. Uh, let the proposal come if it comes, and then we'll have some money, and we're not dipping into a contingency fund all the time. Councilor of the area has stated that the, there's a want and a need. I'm out to lunch. I don't know. I wouldn't want to take it out. If the people want to come and they show some interest in it and they want to raise some money, then we got something there for them. So I'd, I'd leave it in. But I think is a that a, vote, a motion you made? Yeah, that's a motion. Okay. So, um, we can vote on it. Yeah. And it, that's, I don't care if it gets voted down, but uh, I just, we talk about uh, making decisions and you don't want to spend that. You want to keep it in, but you don't want to spend it without thinking. And I think for me to have a good reason to keep it in and to make an educated decision, I need to see those stats from the recreation uh, master plan. You talk about thinking when you're spending. Well, that's the only way I can think about how I'm going to spend that money is to see the need on paper rather than staff going out. And I think, yeah, <laughs> we'll, we'll leave it at that. Um, question to administration, where the, there's $40,000 in the budget for upgrading the Cheadle Rink. Can we do basically what we did this year? 
I believe that was less than fifteen hundred dollars to to make it to get another year out of it and 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 start this start this um, the master plan. And while I've got everybody's opinion or um, attention um, along the same lines, Cheadle Campground. We've got eighty thousand dollars in there Eagle for Lake. playground equipment. Eagle, Eagle. Oh, sorry, Eagle Lake Campground. Um, <laughs> and I like. I've got a couple questions. Like, number one is, is that campground? Can I, as a citizen, just drive in there and bring my grandkids in to play in that equipment? And number two, if I can't do that, then why are we doing it? Forty thousand will get the cars line or the Cheadle rink, from my understanding, up to standard, and it'll be good for now for the next ten years. No, I would not recommend it because we have a risk of injury to kids the way it is right now because of the certain materials, and that's been expressed to council numerous times. So to do that, I think there would be a jeopardy in doing that. Uh, cars on, you don't have that jeopardy because there's nothing there. It's been all removed because it was in, in that kind of a condition, right? So uh, I would strongly encourage against the 40,000 removing that. Um, now, will it be 40,000? It might leave, likely be less, and it probably will be less. But we would like to consider council considering having forty thousand in there so that we can do it properly. The Eagle Lake campground equipment, yes, you can go in there and use it. Maybe not at your free will. No, it may not be at your free will. Six seventy one zero zero yeah sixty six ten oh one. That one's the same. I mean, there was a playground playground inspection done of all of our playgrounds, which had never been done before, and that one was found to be not meeting certain standards. So that was why it was removed. Same as in, same as Gleeson. I just have a comment that we have two playgrounds in Carsland and they're both um, were funded by community support and they're in the Carsland uh, tot lot and the Carsland school. I'm not guessing. It's I'm not guessing. The county didn't go in and tear out the equipment because they like tearing out equipment. They go ahead and tear it out because it doesn't meet a safety standard dictated by OHS. So, but I think we have a motion on yeah. the floor. Vote it down. I don't care, but I said it. So a couple. Of so as discussion on that motion, a couple of points I'd like to make is that um, Deputy Reeve Kester, you were uh, differentiating it from the Gleeson Arena in the sense that they, like Gleeson would no longer have an arena if we didn't invest in that um, facility that was on county property. I see the uh, Carsland Arena as quite, or the Carsland Outdoor Rink as quite similar because they had, and I'm not sure all of the history of how that rink came about, but my understanding is it is on county property and we removed it and so I think that's what differentiates some of this stuff when you're talking about the playground equipment on Carsland school we would never have the authority to go in and remove that equipment because it's not on our property and we can draw a line and say that we are only addressing um, recreation through a certain grant program and that's I agree a philosophical question that we have to answer I completely agree with you but I will argue that recreation is a municipal it's part of the services that we offer 
whether we're looking at transportation or whether we're looking at utilities or whatever we're looking at. Is there any donuts left? I'm not sure you'll have to check over there. So I think, and there are some philosophical questions we have to answer regarding like to what extent we want to provide recreation. I think a master plan is a good idea, but this is an immediate need in the community due to action that our municipality took in removing that due to liability issues. You also, um, it was referenced like an issue, say in Rocky Port or Standard. I think one thing that differentiates some of the communities on the east side that do service some of our ratepayers is they have their own municipal governments. They have their own uh, governance that makes some of those decisions. Some of it I totally respect is community association driven, which I think is happening in uh, Carsland as well. But we also have hamlets that we are responsible for providing service to, and I think that differentiates. And I'm not saying it should be limited, and we shouldn't be looking at Lyalta and Cheadle, and like we should be looking at all of our hamlets, and I think we do on a case-by-case -case basis. I do have to speak to Carsland in respect to WFCSS, because the budget that was presented today did show equal servicing, like for home support, for example, in Carsland as it did in Gleeson. So I don't think Carsland is being neglected per se. We no, look after utilities. No, I know, I just, I wanted to clarify that so that it's not um, misunderstood. Okay. We do, like, I think that we are addressing lots of infrastructure issues that are in Carsland and Speargrass and things like that. But there's, di like, there's diverse needs in each community, but I see the outdoor rink as a really good way to provide some recreation in that community. We are the ones that are responsible for removing it because of our inspection and our liability issues, so I don't support the motion on the floor. I'll leave it at that. Is there any further questions or discussion? No, I'll say if there is a need, the report will show there is a need. There's no further discussion or questions. I'll call the vote. All in favor of the motion? Opposed? Motion is lost. <laughs> Do we have any further no. questions or comments regarding the capital budget? Can I go back to the Eagle Lake Campground? Oh, playground yes, equipment? please. Can I put a motion on the floor to get rid of it? Like, does that put us in any... I'll vote. <laughs> <laughs> uh, um, I'll, like, I, I don't... I just cannot justify spending $80,000 on... Basically, I, a privately run operation. It doesn't matter who, who owns the land. It is not our, it is not, this is different than putting it into, into a hamlet or anything else. We're putting it into somebody's, yeah, we're, we're actually in helping somebody's business. And I really, that. So anyways, I will, I move that we, we eliminate the $80,000 for the Eagle Lake campground from this budget. Can I, can I ask a question to administration? Um, what was communicated with the campground when the previous equipment was removed? If there was any communication regarding future budgeted allowances for replacement or anything? I, I don't know the answer to that. I'd have to have Dave come in and speak to that. I can get to him for sure. Sure. If you could, I, I just, I wouldn't mind to know what the expectation was provided when it was removed. Sure. Why don't we take a five minute break? I guess we had a public hearing that was starting at three o'clock too. Don't take a break? Okay. Okay. Are there other questions regarding the capital budget? Now, I know this is uh, in next year's uh, 2020 budget, but Clooney playground equipment replacement, 60,000. Um, I can count on my hands and toes how many people are in Clooney. I'm not spending 60,000. <laughs> uh, yes, just in like. Well, I, I'd th like, I'd throw swings in there, just swings. <laughs> but that's it. Like, nothing over, like, maybe. Really? Oh, Jesus. I'll build it. Exactly. Yeah. Way too much. 
But I just like that is uh, that's unbelievable. There's I don't even think there's sixty people in Clooney. Yes, and to note, um, in the future years especially, a lot of the times there are just placeholders. So what we do is we say, okay, we anticipate we're going to do this project. So even from the interim operating budget as an example to now, those amounts change, and, and this amount tie, does not tie council to any spending in 2020. <sighs> Good afternoon, Dave. There's a motion on the floor to remove the funding for the Eagle Lake Campground Playground equipment replacement for $80,000 in the 2019 budget. I was just wondering what communication has occurred with Eagle Lake Campground um, when the previous existing playground equipment was removed. If there was any expectations or any discussion about this budget or that kind of thing. Um. No, the only communication was that some of the pieces didn't meet uh, standard, and it was very close to their, their closing time, so they had to bring some of their stuff that they put in up to standard, and then we did discuss uh, the removal of some of the other ones, which we were going to talk again about in the spring. But there was no mention about any replacement or anything like that at this point. Okay. Thank you. Are there any other questions or Discussion regarding the motion on the floor. One. I'm thinking the motion was remove it. It was. I don't have a problem paying for it if it's part of their rec regular yearly upgrades and they apply to have it taken off of their taxes like every other upgrade they do on the on the campground, right? Huh? I don't know. No. But that's the only way I would pay for it through their taxes. If they upgrade, like, every year they come in and they ask for a break in their taxes to get it back because they spent that much money on infrastructure. I look at the playground equipment as infrastructure, and I agree with Tom. I don't want to pay for it up front. Administration has a comment. Their taxes are nowhere near eighty thousand yeah. dollars a year, so they'd have to spread it over. Yeah, it's forty five hundred or something. And that still wouldn't be included. So that as a wouldn't capital. that would not work for this situation, foreseeably, uh, unless they amortize it over twenty years, which I don't anticipate that she's going to be operating in twenty years. It's what she's telling me. She wants to retire at some point, so I don't think that would make foreseeable sense in that regard. And that scenario would still not put it as a capital expense because then it would be an expense by them and then it would go through a decrease in revenue. Are there any other questions or comments regarding the current motion? I'll call the question. All in favor of removing the Eagle Lake Campground Playground Equipment Replacement? Opposed? <laughs> motion is carried. Are there other questions or comments regarding their proposed capital budget? Do you have a question, Councillor Wilson? I know, Brian, you said it was uh, your year away and it's hard to tell but what would be the land improvements park upgrades for that just general for 2020 uh for the hundred thousand you know what i'm actually not quite sure david so i mean it seems like we're putting a lot of money into parks Dave, Madam Chairman, uh, that was that hundred thousand was in the budget when I first started. I just left it in there. I wasn't sure what the plans were. Thank you for that clarification. <coughs> Are there any other questions? Now, in terms of the discussion around Township Road two hundred and fifty, I know that's on our planning and prior 
priorities for Thursday, it remains in the capital budget. That's correct. I believe it is as it's presented. Mm -hmm. Yes. Yes. Do you want to answer? Um, so that specific paving project, we just had I think it's moved. on page 102. Yes. Oh, okay. Um, I think. This is a paved road, correct? Yep. Oh, okay. I think we just... Re it's actually 102. Yeah, so Four. it's right here on the screen, I believe, if it's the same one we're talking about, this... Uh, Six thirty-two ten six one six six one zero ten. So we just changed the name to two thousand nineteen paving project. Um, my apologies that the I didn't highlight this one just because the amount did not change, but the name did change. Okay. So at this time, we're just unsure of the projects that we want to complete for paving in two thousand nineteen. So we left the amount in the budget itself. However. It, to, to be determined what projects are complete or which ones we move forward with. Thank you for that clarification. Or council can remove the 4.9 million out of the reserve transfers and we not do any paving this year. That's another option. But I would recommend against that. Uh, prices continue to be fairly favorable. So it would be advantageous, I think, to continue to do some paving each year. but. Road 240 from Global Road to Highway 24. It was budgeted at 400,000, and year to date is 168,000. Like, what, why is I, it wasn't that good of a deal? I know that. Yes, and, and my apologies. My apologies on this one. In the capital budget, I realized that the year to date numbers actually were not updated on this document. So I realized that this morning as I was kind of glancing through it again. However, just for council's awareness, the <coughs> total TCA additions in 2018 were 23 million. Um, and I can certainly bring that back for council next time. So my sincerest apologies on that. Yeah, uh, any current expenses for 2019 would not be reflected in that budget document. So there certainly are expenses that occur, have occurred in 2019 for the county, but they're just not reflected in that actual yeah, no, it budget. Was, it was, it was in oh, okay. Yeah, so all, all the... All expenses related to the WRC are under the operating budget. Um, yeah, as for current up to 2019, I just don't have that information available. Oh. Yeah, it's not bad. Pretty good luck so far. I pulled three, but that's all heifers were gone. Serves you right for buying heifers. We're going to bring more liquor. Screw it. Just one more question for me, and then I promise I'm done. Um, no, I don't actually. Mike, I, I know it's, oh, yeah, both. Um, I know it's, I, I've asked today, and I'm pretty sure it's not, but the shallow bridge isn't, the shallow crossing bridge in Glens area, low level, uh, isn't in the budget, correct? The amount was decreased, I think. 
I, I didn't know if it had a bridge number, and I had no idea what the bridge number was. I have one question on the Gleeson liner repair refurbishing. Was that a – it wasn't done last year because of time, so that was 150. So it looks like there's another 150 added to 300 for 2019. Is that a mistake, or is that what the new costs are going to be? Yeah, that was uh, – this tender was – through the chair, this tender was closed uh, <clears throat> right in the beginning part of November, right as we were doing this budget. Um, and so the, the revised cost, because we actually had to go around and do quite a bit more earthwork than we anticipated, um, it is around the 240000 plus engineering uh, above what we anticipated to begin with. So that's why you see the increase in, in costs, sir. Any other questions? Are we prepared to adopt the capital budget? Any questions or discussion? As amended, Glenn? As amended? Okay, I have a question. Well, the removal of the 80,000, I think, was the only amendment so far. I just have a question on the Carsland um, arena or, or outdoor rink. Is there something that council wants from us? Because once you approve the budget, we're moving forward on projects, right? We have to get moving. Um, is there something that council wants to see from administration before we move forward on the, the, the project? That doesn't have to be part of your motion. Your motion is, is good. I just, after you do your motion, then maybe there needs to be another motion just to give us some direction on that, how you want to deal with that, okay? Is there any further discussion regarding the motion on the floor? All in favor? Motion is carried. So administration is asking for direction regarding curling outdoor rink. There was some discussion around leaving it in the budget, but waiting on the project until some further consultation or rec master plan. What is council's wishes? I know a terms of reference was mentioned for the rec master plan. I don't know what the timeline. I don't remember us talking about that. Did we? Let's go ahead. Has council? Alan, has the rec master plan been presented to council? Are we all? The out terms to lunch? of reference, Dave, and Dave has got it completed, right, okay. Dave? So it's going to go out for proposals now that the budget, as soon as the budget's been approved, then we can go for proposals on that. It's included in the budget, and we anticipate mid next year we'll have it completed. It's, a, it's going mid to take us. 2019. 2020, mid next 2020. year. Yeah. Okay. It'll take us probably 10 to 12 months to complete the roof master plan, right, Dave? Did you say? Council's just wondering if it was presented, and we might be forgetting, if it was presented to Council to do it prior to this budget. That was part of the, to do the master plan? Yeah. That was part of the direction you gave us when we went through the process last May of the capacity building? Okay. You directed administration to come up with a master plan. It was so part of our strategic initiatives. That's correct. Oh. Yeah, that's where it came from. Okay. No, we just... We're confirming that. And if you look at the most recent update that I provided last month, you'll see on there that the terms of reference have been completed, and we were just waiting budget for approval, so that we'll move forward on uh, sending out the proposals. Okay. Thank you. Okay. What I would like to see in all of the county before we start building anything is the community come in and uh, put a proposal forward, how they're going to fund it, how they're raising money, but ask the council for whatever they want council to do, and we can bait it that way when we get to know exactly what they want and let them think about what they want. It's their community. Let them decide. 
I don't know how to put that into motion, but. That's part of the master plan. Yeah. So I think at this point you've approved the 322 for cars line, so we just need to understand what you want to do with that project. That the, the community of Carsland to get together and see what they can do. Just okay. have an open house. Can council host an open house with the residents and see what that they want that money to go to? I think I'd rather be there with staff. I so would I prefer it if they'd have their meeting and they come into council and decide it. It's a council thing. I would prefer them to come in and ask, no different than standard, come in and ask, no matter than whatever anybody wants some money from council, they come in and ask. If they want to have an open house and we will go there, that's, that's fine, but I would like to see come into council so our ratepayers in all of the county can see that they've come and uh, we will work with the community as administration and with the area councillor and we'll get them to put together a package and come into council. That, is that okay, Glenn? Is that what you're looking for? Okay. Uh, Madam Chair, uh, um, the terms of reference uh, we'd also want to bring back to council, I think, as well, Alan, um, before we went through the tender uh, process, like to do the RFP for the consultant and that. I think, to, as well, I, I saw that as part of the process as, as I'm looking over the terms of reference, and then uh, I, I don't, I don't think I included that master plan in the 2019 budget. I think it was in the 2020 for the actual. So I'm not sure about the timelines on how, how by the time we get the consultant engaged, how that would work for that as well. Just that one? I think it was in the 2020 for the, 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 the master plan. Yeah. Is it? Yeah. Oh, you bumped it up. Okay, perfect. Okay, I just wanted to make sure that it was in the right year if we were going to. It's a good thing to do. Is there further, I guess, does, was that a motion, Glenn? Does it mean, do you want a motion? Okay. Is council in agreement with the direction that we're going with Carsland Outdoor Rink? Absolutely. Directing administration to work with the community and staff to bring a proposal to council? Yeah, I agree with it, because the last thing you want to do is put something there and think it's a good idea here, and then the community go, that's not what I wanted. We never used it in the first place. Well, maybe they want a multi-use or something within that same budget parameter, and they'll work out some labor to do something else, or, you know, I, I've been fully supportive of that. So. And the timing's perfect, because we're in April, so we've got lots of time to work through a summer project. Yet, hopefully. Hopefully. We had a three o'clock appointment for a public hearing. Oh, thank you very much for all of the work on the operating and the capital budgets. And thank you for the summary of changes. That always makes it easier to follow. Alan, is that everything you needed for the budget? Okay. Margaret, we passed the capital budget. Okay. Don't blink. Thank you. Alan, I probably need to do the public hearing spiel for the fire services public hearing. <laughs> I'll move that the process for the Wheatland County Council meeting as it pertains to the scheduled public hearing will be as follows. Public hearing 
Uh, first reading, if required, which was already passed. Then consideration for further readings of bylaw for those public hearings that have been closed. And we won't need to move in and out because there's only one. I will open the public hearing for bylaw 2019-06. I don't know if administration would like to present. Yep. Oh, I'm sorry. On the back page. The email references some attached comments. If I may, through the chair. Sorry? So if I may, through the chair, of course. Um, of course. The, the comments were given to us yesterday at noon. There was no opportunity whatsoever to change the, the council package to include or really review the, the comments made. Um, in my last uh, bulletin, that. Yeah, they're not outlandish in any way, shape, or form for the request made from Rocky Verde. It's just, it's a little too late. Um, it covers off uh, basic functions and responsibilities that when I sat with the associations, they agreed to keep those in there at that point in time, just so we could define basic roles and responsibilities and the joint responsibility between the county me, and the associations. We'll just take a moment to review the comments. I look through them. I'll make a motion for a second reading of bylaw 2019 06. We're still in public hearings. Oh, sorry. I just need one more minute. Question to Stuart, and <clears throat> when he says in here that the level of service is part of the fire service agreement that is to be written for each of the parties, does that mean that each party has a different level of service? That's what I'm asking. So why wouldn't you put it in the bylaw then? It is in the bylaw. I know. That's my, that's my question is why he wants it out of the bylaw. Because he wants different... I don't have a problem with it being in the bylaw.
if there's no further comments from staff and the non-existent public, I will close the public hearing. I'm not ready yet. Oh, sorry. Got these comments, I'd like to. Yeah, no, take your time. I don't mean to rush anybody. We can still. I just we thought we could need, close we the public to hearing in, and discuss uh, them. A, we can close the public hearing. We can still deal with the comments. Can still deal with these comments. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. That's I have further comments as well. I just thought we would close the public here. Okay. Is everybody yep. in agreement? Yep. With that, I will close the public hearing for bylaw 2019 06 and open it up for back to council for consideration of the bylaw and further readings. I'd like to make a motion that bylaw 2019 06 be given second reading. In its entirety. I have a couple of questions, Stuart. Under definitions for N, are we changing it to take off the dis, or we're just calling that a fire association chief? Yes, that was a request made by the association so they could differentiate I'm just, between a county district fire chief and an association district fire chief. Okay, so we will be calling them fire association chief and a district fire department. I think there's a couple of places. Um, I just want to make sure these are right. So I noticed we don't have an associate fire department defined, but it's referenced in W under fire department. Right. So do we need a definition for an associate fire department because it's referenced in the other definitions? Association, sorry. Yeah, and I'm not necessarily referencing their comments just from my perspective. I think if we're going to define the county fires, like a county fire association, or sorry, a, a fire. district <coughs> fire department. Well, I'm just trying to, because we've defined, oh no, we haven't defined county fire association. County fire department. Okay. There's, so I'm just trying to make sure our language is consistent. So we do have the definition district fire department, but we don't have a kind of collaborating definition for, so district would be a county only, not an association fire department, is that correct? So is it redundant to define fire department and district fire department? Are those the same terms or? The reason I'm asking is because further in the document it references it and so in BB it references district fire departments. But I guess if they're just, can be either or it's fine. It's just redundant. Exactly. It's fine, you can have redundant terms, but it is redundant. And I think where it where I started having problems.
Well, part of my question was, so N, we define it a fire association chief. I just, I want the document to be consistent. And then further on in the document, I'm just going to it, sorry, it's on page 264, page 12 of the bylaw, it references the county chiefs. So I just would like those to be consistent. And the title is district chiefs, authority, duties, and responsibilities. So we either need to change the title or like, I would just like consistent language, that's all, just for clarity. That was actually, I think that's all that I have. I don't know what council thinks. Uh, Stuart, in, uh, when I'm looking at Rocky for its uh, concerns, they're really, uh, they are addressed I would think again in their service agreements and it's in the bylaw too and it'll be similar to the comments I had before the bylaw sometimes it, our bylaws get a little wordy yep. yeah sorry in the case of fire service agreements those are a negotiable document whereas the bylaw is not yeah when I, when I look over there the budgets and expenditures that won 5.7 when I look at it really it doesn't say my any it's in the bylaw but it doesn't say anything to me it says shall be in accordance with the fire service agreement then or not to me it doesn't have any all it does it says in right Yep. Can you tell me why it's in there? That was 5.7, sir. 5.7. And I'm thinking that's kind of the same as the other comments. Or they're addressed in the fire service agreement. I don't... Uh, that could be removed. That's a decision of council, sir. Yeah. We can or... Yeah. Understand what I'm trying to say. Yep. On that point, I don't think it's bad for clarity just to say that the budgets will be addressed in the agreement. But I'm open to discussion. But it doesn't that. need to be in there if it's not in the if it's not in the bylaw. It's well, it it ensures that they will be in the agreement, and I think that was some of the concern that was expressed a year ago with council is that we ought to make sure that some of the bare minimums are included in the bylaw. So that's why it's been included there. If you don't include it in there, then when you get to the agreement. There's nothing that says holds us to the fire and says that we have to include it in there. Logically, you would do that, but. Okay. So I could safely say then, Rocky Ford's concerns, their concerns are these are, should be in the agreement, and we're putting it in the bylaw to make sure it is in the agreement. And, and to that end, if that's the logic we're using, we're both on the same page. We're just using different words, really. They're saying it should be, and we're saying it's in the it's going to be, right? Yeah. If that's the case, then I'd I'm ready to vote. Are there any other further questions or comments? <laughs> All in favor of second reading of bylaw 2019 Motion is carried. Ben is moving third reading. <laughs> Are there, is there any questions or comments? All in favor? Motion oh is carried. <laughs> we have a fire bylaw. Oh, <laughs> I don't see a pig fly. Is the sky falling? And I believe with that, we have three closed session matters to deal with. We have a five minute, again, I have a leak. I don't need to know what you need to do on your time. We'll take a five minute recess. <laughs>